So does this document look familiar to anyone? You may have seen it as a patient. You may have already seen it uh, within the MA course somewhere on your, on your, in your, during your first semester. These are vi vaccine information statements, VIS. And uh, I guarantee you when you go out to do, well, I shouldn't guarantee you. Let me put it this way. When you go out to get your Hep B vaccines and when you get the first one in the series, check and see if the MA gives you the VIS. And if it, it, because they're supposed to offer, but sometimes they forget. If they should happen to forget to offer you a VIS, ask politely for it so that you have a copy of the CDC regulations and the information that you need to know about that vaccine. And to be very technical about it, the VIS it usually is presented to the patient before they get the vaccine. So that if they have any questions, they can be answered before you administer it. Uh, the protocol I'm familiar with is that uh, we let the patient see this during the first time they get the vaccine. As you know, many vaccines come in a series. So you get two or three or four uh, immunizations total to, to, to complete the series. And generally speaking, they're going to have you look at the VIS on the first initial administration. Although some organizations may require that this document be given to the patient on every immunization of that series. So you're doing Hep B, which is usually three immunizations, and you might get three VISs from that MA over the course of the six months or a year that you're doing that that are all exactly the same. So uh, I guess you could say on one hand it's safety, on the other hand it would be a lot of wasted paper. Once you've read it and had the immunization, you kind of already have it. So is what it is. They are required by federal law. This is the National Childhood Vaccine Inquiry, Act, or pardon me, Injury Act of 1986 that's that provides information about the benefits and risks it is designed to answer uh, questions and it generally does but it sometimes it also precipitates new questions and often um, especially when you're immunizing a child a parent will think of a question that you have never had presented to you based on what they read on the vac vaccine information statement so be prepared for that to happen um, always remember, if you don't know the answer, a very good response that will always win the confidence of the patient is to say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that question. Give me a minute. I'm going to get the answer from someone who does have it, and I'll be right back with you. And that is a really great way, of, once again, like the hand washing, instilling confidence in the patient regarding you and your services as a, as a medical assistant, because you're willing to say, that you have a situation that you don't know what the right answer is, but you're willing to go get that answer and bring it back to the patient. And that really makes people feel cared for. And, and it's also a very honest way to approach. If you don't know the answer, be willing to get the answer for the patient. Not only will you be informing the patient, but guess what? You've just informed yourself. And the next time you get that question, you'll have an answer or at least a better informed answer in that situation. So always a good idea to offer to get the answer if you don't have it. Um, so it answers questions. As I said, it also may cause more questions than you were prepared to answer. Um, it talks about reactions and those are generally what will trigger the, the additional questions. And sometimes, I would actually say in most times when you're talking about reactions, it should come directly from the physician or the phys physician tells you d directly what they want you to say. But once again, follow the protocol that's presented to you by the situation you're in. Always make sure that you're answering to the doctor's protocol. Um, so any provider of vaccines must give a VIS to the patient or to the patient's parent or legal guardian before administering the vaccine. Now I did say earlier, that many times it happens after administration. Um, but if you're gonna stay within the uh, federal law, you wanna give it before you administer the vaccine. Um, each time the vaccine's given, not just with the first dose. Now that's contrary to what I said before. As I said, it is common uh, that you will get see it the first time and not with subsequent visits. But once again, following federal law, it should happen every time you get it done. And the date of the VIS is given to the patient parent or guardian, and the VIS publication date must be documented in the patient's medical record. Most clinics, when we're using EMRs, the clinic manager or the IT person will have that already on a template, and you'll just apply that template to that administrative uh, note when you, when you note the immunization. But once again, every clinic's different. Always follow the protocols 
and do be aware that it does need to be documented that you that the VIS was given. And once again, if you're going to stay within the federal boundaries, it has to be done each time. So I mentioned earlier the Hep V, hep v vaccine. There's three shots in the series. I mentioned and usually they'll give it to you on the first one and you won't get it on the subsequent ones. But if you want to stay within federal law, you must do that. So as externs, we're going to ask you to make sure that you're when you're working with patients, if you give that immunization, you give the VIS each time before you give the immunization. Some general guidelines. So quiet, well-lit atmosphere. It's free from distractions. That might be hard to find in a really busy family or uh, urgent, urgent care clinic. Uh, well-lit will be easy to find quiet or free from distractions may not be the always be the case um, but you want to try to create that so if you are in a busy hectic environment stay focused on your task don't try to you know have a conversation with a coworker or answer a phone call or do something else while you're preparing an injection that is exactly the moment you could make a mistake that you do not want to make so as well as if you want this to be quiet well lit and free from distractions but even more important, importantly, keep your focus on your task. Stay on task and be safe for yourself and for your patient. I said this earlier, always ask if you have a question about the medication order. If you're not 100% certain of what that order is, go to the doctor or the PA or the NP who issued it and make sure that you understand uh, what they're ordering you to do. And do not act on assumption ever in a medical situation. Always act on knowledge only. Uh, you should be familiar with the drugs you're giving and, uh, and the common abbreviations. Always hand hygiene, once again, before preparing, before administering, and after giving injections. So a good routine to get into is once you've prepared the medication and done all that behind the scenes, then you walk into the room, you set the tray down. If there's a sink, go wash the hands, glove up, and then give the injection. Makes a great impression, as I said earlier. Um, all preparation is, is aseptic, and including the preparation on the patient. So make sure that you're always using medical asepsis. Once again, we're trying to, to prevent transmission of infection. And make sure you select the proper drug according to the order, which is why we go back to number two. If you don't understand the order, ask again so that you get it right. Another thing following along the lines of getting it right, the three checks. When you go to take that medication out of its storage area, you look and see what it is and make sure you understand it's what you need and what you should be administering. As you're getting ready to load that syringe, you pick, it up, pick up that vial and look again. Make sure it didn't get swapped out. You can have a busy day in a clinic where there might be five MAs working in an area. Maybe somebody set something down, you thought it's the vial you had. You know, that's why we wanna have that calm, organized environment. Um, my experience in working in clinics is that you sometimes have that environment and sometimes you have a lot of distractions. So once again, keep your focus on what you're doing, stay on task. So now you're prepping the medication before you draw it up, pick up that vial and read it a second time and make sure it's correct. And after you fill that syringe and you've gone through the recapping, you've set the vial down on the tray, look again a third time to make sure this is exactly what you've been given and it matches the doctor's orders, that it matches your knowledge how to, of how to administer that drug and, uh, and that you understand what route you're going to give it by. And if you don't know all that information, do not proceed. Get good solid information before heading into the room. Also, we have seven rights that go, go uh, along with preparing and administering medication. So, and I'm gonna change the word from right to correct. Because right, and I think of the opposite of right, is left. Okay? So I, I, I prefer to think of it as the seven uh, correct things to do. But seven rights works. You want to have the correct drug. You want to have the correct dose. The correct time to administer it. That, that means that's taking into effect age, uh, appropriate uh, intervals between injections, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the right patient or correct patient. The correct route the correct technique, and the correct documentation. All seven of these things have to be nailed each and every time. Not all of them will apply, 
Uh, there are some injections you'll give that'll be a one time only, so interval doesn't matter. So correct time may not come into play. But um, with the exception of that one, I can't think of another one here that you don't need to know exactly every time. So time may not always be a factor, but drug, dose, patient, route, technique, documentation being correct every time absolutely has to happen. No exceptions to this one, MAs. So be very staunch on that protocol. Our guidelines also, and continuing with that, when you check the drug, you want to check the expiration date. If it's expired, don't use it. You want to prepare the proper dose of the medication, and we'll talk about that as we move through the semester. As I said, with premixed immunizations, it's almost always a half mil, and you label the injection to be administered with the patient's initials, the name, the dose, the manufacturer, lot number, expiration date. Um, and some facilities will require you to actually put that on the syringe itself. All of them are going to require you to have that information charted once you complete the immunization. So it's really important you, that you, uh, you, know, you know who you're giving it to, what it's called, how much you gave them, who made it, what the lot number is, and the expiration date. All of that needs to be included in your chart note. Um, also, you want to get to the, into the patient room and sanitize your hands, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you got to want to get the patient to state the full name. So you want to collect their demos to make sure that you have proper ID. You want to check the medical record and make sure every once in a while someone will order something and you look on their med list and then you look at the allergies and you go like, oh, they had a reaction to this once. I better clear this before I do it. And oddly enough, and I've had this situation where I've seen it in the chart and the doctors say, yeah, we're aware of that, but it's more important to get this. So go ahead and administer that's not usually with a immunization. That might be a different type of drug. And if the doctor says, yeah, I'm aware of the allergy, we're going to administer anyway, then you go ahead and follow that order. Um, you want to determine the appropriate route and site to which you administer the, medic the uh, injection. So as I said, you need to know that before you go into the room. So if you don't know that, get that question answered. You have to prep the skin. So you're going to do the aseptic technique. Uh, you're going to apply the gloves before you prep the skin, right after you sanitize the hands. I would probably change the order I would put that in, in this list. But yes, you're going to have clean, disposable gloves every time for every patient. Uh, you're going to use proper technique. You attend to the patient, meaning pay attention to their reaction, pay attention to their psychological state. As I said before, a lot of nerves around these types of procedures usually. And document, document, document. And okay, here we see the cost, the customary immunization card on the right, paper documentation on the left, electronic, whatever the facility that you're working at uses, that's what you want to be doing. And that's what you want to learn. Some rules for documentation, and these will should be included in all documents. And EMRs are awesome because they'll record some of this for you, like date and time will be date stamped on there when you're using electronic records. Name of the medication could be in a template, and a lot of these other things might be part of a template, such as the dose, the route, the site, the manufacturing name, the lot number, expiration date. Um, those things are usually in EMRs or within the template. So you just record the information as you're drawing up the medication and confirm that the template's correct. Um, then, of course, you're going to observe your patient for reactions. Uh, you want to have the name and title of the person who administered, that being yourself in this case. We're speaking from the first person perspective. And then the VIS has to be documented that that was given, as I mentioned earlier. So a lot of information, it seems like. But then if you look at a typical chart note, um, this is a lot what it might look like. So in an EMR, you might be able to call up a template that already says Merck and has the lot number and the expiration date, as you see printed here. Um, and it'll already have the, you know, MMR. Uh, it'll say half a mil sub Q. You'll put in R or L for right or left arm, you'll confirm that that lot number matches the vial that you used, and you'll confirm the expiration date, make sure all that matches. Um, quotes, of your statements about how the patient tolerated, we're going to practice that. Not all facilities will require it, um, but generally speaking, they want to know that the patient tolerated it and make sure that's part of the record. Um, and of course, they're confirming to either with the patient or the parent of the patient. And then you sign that note and that makes it a legal document. So there you go. There's everything you need for week one for injections. Study the material, get the homework done, make sure you read through the reader, take notes and email me if you have any questions. 
Good work, MAs. You got through your first lecture. We'll see you uh, next Wednesday for our next lecture. Thank you.